Chapter Six of Grimm's Fairy Tales, retold in one syllable words. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Doug Fajardo. Grimm's Fairy Tales, retold in one syllable words by jacob and wilhelm grimm chapter six snow white and red rose a poor widow once lived with her two daughters in a small lonely house the two girls were so fair and looked so much like roses that she called one of them snow white and the other one red rose they were as good girls as could be found, at all times cheerful and full of love for one the other. When they went out to walk, they would go hand in hand. If one said, We will never part, the other would say, Never, so long as we live. And what one had was always shared with the other. Often they went to the woods to pick berries but no harm came to them. The hare would eat a leaf from their hands, the deer grazed at their side, and the birds sat on boughs near them and sang to them. They met with no mishap, and if night came on before they left the woods, they had no fear, but lay down on the moss and slept till dawn. Snow White and Red Rose kept the house so clean that it was a treat to look at it. In the summer time, Red Rose swept the floor and placed a fresh bunch of flowers by the side of her mother's bed each morning before she was up. And in the winter, Snow White made the fire and hung the kettle on the hook where it shone like gold, so bright did the little maid keep it scoured. In the evening, when the snow fell, the mother would say, go and bolt the door snow white and then they would all sit by the fire and the mother would read from a large book while the girls spun one evening a knock was heard at the door as if someone wanted to get in quick red rose said the mother go to the door it may be some traveller who looks for shelter red rose opened the door thinking to see a poor man but in place of that, a big black bear poked his head in. Red Rose screamed and ran back, but the bear began to talk and said, Do not fear. I will not hurt you. I am well nigh dead with a cold and wish to come in and warm myself by your fire. Oh, you poor bears, said the mother. Lie down by the fire, but take care that you do not burn your fur. The girls soon lost their fear of the bear and came near him. Then the bear said, Get the broom, children, and brush the snow from my fur. They brought the broom and brushed his fur until it was quite clean, and then he stretched himself out in front of the fire. At last the girls began to play with him and pulled him about by his fur as if he were a big dog. The bear stayed all night, and at dawn the girls let him out, and he ran off over the snow into the woods. But each night, at the same hour, he came back to the house, lay down at the hearth, and let the children play with him for a while. They grew so used to his visits that the door was not locked until he came. One day in spring he said to Snow White, I must go away now, and I shall not come back all summer. Where do you mean to go, dear bear? she asked. I must go to the wood and guard my treasure from the dwarfs. In the winter, when the frost makes the ground hard, they must stay down in the earth. But as soon as the sun melts the frost, they work their way up and steal all they can find. And when a thing is once in their hands, 
it is hard to get it back again. Snow White felt sad to part with the bear. As she led him out through the door, his fur caught on a hook, and a piece of skin was torn off. Snow White thought she saw something gleam like gold under his skin, but was not sure, for the bear ran quickly off, and was soon lost sight of among the trees. Some time after this, the girls went to the wood to get some sticks for the fire. They came to a tree which lay on the path, and saw that something was springing up and down on one of the bows, but they could not tell what it was. When they came nearer, they saw a little dwarf with an old face and a beard a yard long. The end of his beard had caught in a cleft in the tree, and he sprang about like a dog that was fast to a string, for he did not know how to free himself. He glared at the girls and cried, Why do you stand there? Can't you come and help me? What have you done? asked Red Rose. Oh, you stupid goose, he cried. I wish to split some wood for my fire. I drove in a wedge, and all was going well, when the wedge slipped out, and the wood closed up so quickly that my handsome white beard caught, and I can't draw it out. There, don't stand and laugh, you milk-faced things. Phew! How ugly you are! Well, the girls tried to get his beard out, but could not. At last, one of them said, I will run and get someone to help us. Blockheads, he snarled. Who wants more people? You two are more than I want now. Can you think of nothing else? Uh, don't be cross, said Snow White. I can help you. And she took her shears out of her pocket and cut off the end of his beard. As soon as the dwarf felt that he was free, he seized a sack full of gold that he had hid among the roots of the tree, put it up on his shoulders, and said, Smooth-faced fools, to go and cut a piece of my beard. They'll get their pay for it. Then he went off without a glance at the girls. One day Snow White and Red Rose went to catch a mess of fish. As they came near the brook, they saw something like a great locust hopping on the bank, as if it were going to jump in the stream. They ran to it and saw it was the same dwarf. Why do you do that? asked Red Rose. Do you wish to jump in the brook? I'm not such a fool as to wish to do that, he cried. But this fish wants to pull me in. He had sat on the bank to fish, and his beard had been caught in the line, so that when a large fish bit at the bait, he did not have enough strength to draw it out. But in place of that, the fish was pulling him into the water. He clung to the reeds and grass, but it was of no use, for the fish pulled him where it would, and would soon have drawn him into the water. The girls came just in the right time. They held him back and tried to get his beard loose, but they could not do so, as it and the line were so badly tangled. There was nothing to be done but to cut off another piece of the beard. The dwarf was in a great rage. You toadstools, he cried. Now you have ruined my beard. It was not enough that you cut it once. Now you must take the best part of it. I dare not show myself to my own folks again. I wish you may have to run till your shoe soles come off for this. Then he drew a bag of pearls from the reeds and slipped away without saying another word. Not long after this, the mother sent the girls to the town to buy some pins, thread, and lace. Their road passed through a field on which, here and there, lay large stones and rocks. Up in the air they saw a great bird that flew round and round. It sailed lower and lower, 
and at last sank down by one of the stones. Just then the girls heard a scream, and, running up to the bird, they saw that their old friend, the dwarf, had been seized by the bird and was about to be carried off. The kind girls laid hold on the dwarf and held him fast till the bird gave up the contest and flew off. As soon as the dwarf got over his fright, he cried in his sharp voice, Could you not have held me more gently? You have tugged at my fine brown coat till it is all in rags on my back. With no thanks, he picked up his bag of gems and slipped into his den under the stone. The girls were used to his way and did not mind his abuse, but went on to town and bought what they had come for. On their way home they passed through the same field and came upon the dwarf once more. He thought no one would pass at that late hour and had come out of his den and spread out his gems on the ground. They gleamed and shone in the setting sun, and the girls stopped to admire them. He began to scold and rage at them, but as he went on with his hard words and threats, a big black bear rushed at him with a growl. The dwarf sprang up in fright, but could not reach his den. The bear was too near. Then he fell on his knees to the bear and cried, Oh, dear, good Mr. Bear, spare me. I will give you all my gems. See them here? Spare my life. Of what use would such a poor little thing be to you? You would not feel me between your teeth. There, there are two bad girls. Take them. They are as fat as quails. Eat them in place of me. But the bear played no heed to his words, struck him with one blow of his great paw, and he never stirred again. When the girls saw the bear, they started to run away. But he called, Snow White, Red Rose, have no fear. Wait, and I will go with you. They knew his voice and stopped. But when he came up to them, his rough coat of fur fell off, and there stood before them a handsome young man, dressed in rich clothes. I am a king's son, he said. The dwarf bewitched me, stole my treasures, and made me run in the woods as a wild bear, till I should be set free by his death. Now he has received his well-deserved reward. They went home, and not long after, Snow White was married to the prince, and Red Rose to his brother. All the treasures which the dwarf had gathered in his den were shared between them, and they lived in great joy and peace for many years. End of chapter 6 Snow White and Red Rose